Hi, Steve from JNS, and I'm with Paul from Shoei, and we've just got the, the new Shoei GTR 3 with us today. Hi, Steve, uh, that's correct. We've got the new 2206 compliant GTR 3 here today. This takes over from the GTR 2, uh, which we've also put on the desk here. And basically, it's, it's Shoei's new helmet, the premium touring helmet uh, for ultra quiet touring in all conditions uh, that we've introduced to the market. Yeah, and I thought today we'd better compare it against the staple of Shoei helmets, the GTR 2 that we've had for how, how many years has it been going now? About three or four years. Three or four years, but everybody loves this helmet, so this better be something special, I think. Well, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, to uh, we've made a lot of detail changes yeah. to it. Um, Show has got its own wind tunnel, so it's been extensively wind tunnel tested. Right. Um, and they've not made a lot of detail changes to it just to make it a little bit quieter uh, with a little bit more usability as oh, well. So whether you're going for a ride to the shops, uh, maybe you're doing a track day, right. or you're riding across continents down to the south of France, this will be the helmet that yeah. can do it all for you. Yeah. So what are the detailed changes that you've made then to this one? Well, I think the, the most visual change that everybody would notice is that the visor now uh, is a centre lock yeah. rather than the side lock yeah. uh, of the GTR 2. So that's been done for a number of reasons, but one of which is to just avoid the distortion of the visor right. as, it, as it opens, basically. With the centre opening visor, it just decreases the di distortion if you're sort of lifting it from the left-hand side. Same with the NeoTech, wasn't it? That was a change that you made to that one as yes, well. Yes, yes, yes. There's, there's a lot of similarities between the, the NeoTech 3 uh, yeah. and the GTR 3. Yeah. Uh, basically, there's also a slightly thicker rib at the bottom of the helmet for uh, increased stiffness as you open the visor. Uh, and also at the top of the visor, there's an increased thickness there from to 1.4 millimetres from 1 millimetres, and that's to avoid any interface between the pin lock uh, right. and the top rubber catching. seal, yeah, to stop it catching right. with that. Okay. Also, the venting uh, at the bottom has changed. It looks totally different. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it is very different. It's got an insect filter in there now as well. Uh, and we've changed this to get additional yeah. ventilation to the rider, uh, but also to make it quieter. Right. And the top vent uh, has also changed in design and easier to operate with gloved hands. Just a simple slide. I mean, this one's not too bad either, is it? But no. that is a bit further forward and it's got that... Simple know, slide that simple mechanism design, yeah. for increased quietness and also increased airflow. Uh, and also the exhaust vents for the helmet have been moved slightly higher on the helmet. And one of the reasons that's been done is that the air is at a higher velocity on the top of the helmet. So it actually helps the vent to exhaust right. more efficiently, right. basically. That's yes. the beauty of testing it in the wind tunnel, I'd imagine. Yeah, in the wind tunnel, they can try all different configurations. They can try what works, what doesn't work. And uh, it just allows them to experiment with things because sometimes you think might make a helmet quieter, don't necessarily make it quieter. But other times things you don't think will work, will work. And that's the beauty of Shoei having their own wind tunnel. They can use that extensively. And as we talked about this being Shoei's premium touring helmet, you know, if you're going long distances, quietness is something that you would very much appreciate, I'm sure. Definitely. on any long journey. And they always have quite a nice um, chin sphere, don't they, for that as well? Yes, and again, so, it's actually slightly bigger this year, the chin skirt on that, uh, this helmet, again, for increased coverage and increased quietness on it. Yeah, you always um, that, they're quite quiet, the GTR. Yeah. A couple of other changes, actually, where well, we have the, the helmet this way round. There's a high strength fibre woven into the fabric of the chin strap. we are able to make that a little bit narrower over the GTR 2. Nice. Uh, for increased comfort um, and also the ratchet uh, has just been narrowed down again for uh, increased comfort and uh, also it's basically made so it needs a very specific angle to open it which avoids any accidental opening of the helmet in, uh, in any form of crash basically. Okay. In addition while we're looking at this side of the helmet you can see here um, it's slightly uh, slimmer design of the communication system compared yeah. to, uh, say, uh, the GT Air 2, which is a little bit bigger here. So um, I'm assuming that takes a totally different intercom system, Senna. Yes, you're it? right. Um, you're right, Steve. A different system. The GT Air 2 used the Senna SRL2 uh, communication system. Right. 
and the GT Air 3 uses the Senna SRL3 communication system, which is slightly reduced in size, a little bit more integrated into the helmet, which means you can have the communication system fitted without having a big bulky oh, unit. Yeah, on the side uh, of the side of the helmet, basically. So well, a standard unit will still fit, though, won't it? It's still still plenty of room to tuck it in. If you yeah, want to use one that you've already got. If you already have an uh, an external fit uh, centre unit or another communication unit, you can fit it on the outside of the helmet. Okay. That is, that is still possible to do. It's so not a problem. So does it still have the slightly open position? We've been asked about that for the Neotech 3 on the, on the video we did for that helmet. Uh, people are concerned that it doesn't have it anymore with it being a central lock, but I can um, see there that it looks like it has. Uh, yes, yeah, Steve, it does. I mean, sometimes if you're riding um, and maybe you don't have the pin lock fitted um, and it's sort of the visor slightly fogging up, it can be quite useful to just open the visor slightly. Yeah. So you just... Um, press the lock there and you can move it up one position and it'll just hold itself there, um, sort of three or four millimetres clearance. We're gonna let a bit an amount of air go into the visor and just stop any fogging inside. Brilliant, so it's still got that feature that this one has. Indeed, um, and actually also uh, as a touring helmet, Steve, I think it's uh, important to mention, uh, it's also got the QSV2 sun visor fitted. Um, say you're going on a long tour um, you might be riding out in the sunlight, bright sunny day in the south of France, yeah. and then you ride into a tunnel. Yeah. So um, it can be useful to be able to put the sun visor up to ride through the, uh, ride through the tunnel, yeah. and you come out the other side into the bright sunlight again, bring the visor down, and you've just got protection from the sun. You don't have to squint as much. Yeah, and the thing I like about the showy system is it's sort of, it's on a slide. It doesn't just stop in like jolts. It's a smooth motion, so if you want it slightly up, you can. It just stops where you leave it, doesn't it? Yeah, you can, you can actually uh, vary where it comes yeah. down to. Uh, it's cable operated and can, yeah. uh, basically a continual uh, slide between yeah. the lowest position and yeah. the highest position, and it will pretty much stay in any position you chose to put it into. Yeah, which is a good thing about that, because you can just have it slightly down if you want, if it's just coming at the top. Yeah, a bit like maybe the sun visor that you have on a car that yeah, stops the stops yeah. the sun coming in from above. You can uh, actually just have the higher bit of the sun visors to just take the top bit of the uh, sun out of your vision, which will just help you in able to being able to see what's on the road. Yeah, it's always good. To see. Well, always good to see, isn't it, with any uh, any helmet when you're riding. So in the new helmet, it's still fully removable interior, isn't it? So you can take it out, wash it. Yeah, you can um, you can take out the uh, inside of the helmet there to wash the cheek pads or take out any bits that you need um, to, to wash or clean. Um, it's all fully removable and you can fit those back in again, no problem whatsoever. Yeah, and you can also get different sizes currently for that custom fit. Yeah, if you uh, go to your Showy Assured retailer, um, which would be any of the JNS shops, um, and uh, when you're initially purchasing the helmet, you don't feel like it fits correctly, um, then you can work with the shop and they can adjust the cheek pads in the helmet just to get a better fit uh, of the helmet onto your face. Yeah. So no such thing as having a showy or an RI head or anything like that anymore. Anything well, like we wouldn't like to think so. We feel that we could fit the showy to uh, yeah. anybody, it basically. Can, it can be made to fit you perfectly. That's the beauty of the new showy products. That's what we yeah. would very much hope, Steve. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, the other thing I was going to mention is with the, the new... Aerodyno, it's quite a similar looking helmet, isn't it? But it's it's just little increments have changed. Yeah, for us, the, the GT Air 3 uh, is more about evolution than revolution. Um, it's, uh, as we say, the premium touring helmet, but also with a sporty look and feel to it. Yeah. Um, and with the wind tunnel testing that we've done with the helmet, We've tried to keep it uh, as comfortable as possible, but also make it as quiet as possible for long tours. Oh. So there are some uh, detail changes like the deflectors around here, yeah, the positioning of the upper air vents. Um, edge, yeah. yeah, just to deflect the wind away, which are all designed um, to make the helmet a little bit quieter for the rider. So we've got it in the matte blue colour here. So I take it it's going to come in a huge array of colours eventually, but. I What's, what's available at the minute? 
Well, the GTR 3 will be coming through um, later in October yeah. um, with a wide range of colours and graphics. You've yeah. got your whites, blacks, um, the matte blue metallic that we have here, but also a range of graphics, helmets. Um, there's a GTR 3 which uh, is red, white and blue, a bit similar to the GTR 2 here. But yeah, uh, again, as per any normal Chevy helmet, wide range of graphics will be uh, released onto the market. Huge, so Huge range in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Replicas and things that you can get. We'd like to think we'll have uh, something for everyone out there, yeah. uh, as far as the graphics are concerned, or if you want a white or a black helmet, we've got you covered on all bases. Something for every bike. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully, Steve, that's what we like to hear. So, what comes with it in the box? So, with the GTR 3, um, you've got the Sherry bag to keep your helmet uh, nice and safe and non damaged. You can put it in there uh, for keeping. You've got the okay. pin lock visor to fit in or stop any fogging. Really, really good if you've never used one of these before. They are game changing. You've also got your instructions, your little bottle of silicon lubricant oh, there. Oh, yeah, okay. to make sure the seals yeah. are lubricated. Yeah. Um, keep he swears by that stuff on, on these. Yeah. yeah, it really does actually help to keep the seals um, in good condition. It helps them seal and it just means that they stay in great shape for years to come. Yeah. Um, you've also got your little tool there uh, for visor adjustments um, and we have actually uh, fitted in here already the nose guard that comes in um, and also the chin skirt down the bottom for the increased quietness which is, as I mentioned is a bit bigger now on the GTR 3. Okay so I think that's it now really, I think Paul's covered everything. Thank you very much for your time Paul, thanks for telling us all the new features. And if you've got any more comments that you'd like to ask for us, drop it in the comments below because we always miss things and it's, it's nice to get your insight on, on the products and whether you, which you choose, what colour you'd like and what features you want to see in helmets in the future. And uh, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See you in the next one.